Well, the dust has settled on a busy Sandown 500, and given that work commitments meant I couldn't do my usual round preview and review, welcome to a video that I'm calling A Breath Before Bathurst. I'm going to take a look at the key highlights and takeaways for me from the Sandown 500 and then look ahead to the Bathurst 1000, discussing the three key issues I feel are in play for supercars at the moment. They include engines, full course yellows, and this rule about main drivers needing to start the endurance races. So let's kick things off with a look backwards. Sandown this year for me, I feel, was a pretty darn good race. It was certainly a lot more eventful than 2023. And while it would have been great to have another team up there fighting with those two Red Bulls, they still had a pretty good battle amongst themselves. And I'm really curious to see how that intensifies as we head to the big one. Of course, you've got to give big props to Red Bull's co-drivers as well. Scott Pye doing an excellent job on debut as a co-driver for that team. And of course, Jamie Wingup doing his usual solid job. The real good news story, however, was behind them. The third place getter, James Golding and Russell. Their first podium down there at Premier New Lawn Racing. And what a place to do it. Of course, the historic Sandown race. And they did it in style because I really like that new refreshed white base livery that they're running. I thought it looked spectacular and they had a spectacular result to match. Matt Pang and Gartanda were the leading Ford contenders finishing in fourth. I actually had a gut feeling that these guys were going to compete, if not take the win at Sandown. It wasn't quite that good of a weekend for them, but still a very solid foundation for them to build on leading in to Bathurst. The most surprising result of the weekend has to go to Craig Lowndes and Cooper Murray in the wild card though. That super cheap car found itself in fifth place at the end of that race. A truly awesome result. And I feel like this is the first year that wild card has had proper potential to challenge at Bathurst. I'm really excited to see how they go. Of course, Bathurst presents its own whole range of challenges and success at Sandown is by no means guarantee you'll go well at the mountain. However, I do think these guys have something good going this year. I'm really keen to see how they go. And we'll finish up with one of the more unfortunate moments from Sandown, which was, of course, a key moment in the championship for Chas Mostert. His teammate, co-driver Lee Holdsworth, dropped the car between turns one and two. It was an almighty tank slapper. He did well to keep it out of the wall, but they did do some damage to that car. And unfortunately, the best they could muster was uh, creeping into the top 10 at the end of that race. A fairly solid recovery, but certainly they would have been looking for more, especially as Mostert's trying to build this championship championship charge in the back half of the season. So as we build up to the great race, let's chat about those three hot topics. Of course, starting with engines, because we saw massive reliability issues over the Sandown weekend for the Ford runners. Richie Stanaway had his rear wheels lock after an engine failure down the back straight. That was a hell of a moment for him. And then it was reported during the ride day following the event, uh, at least three other Ford Mustangs encountered similar issues. So that's certainly a massive concern. Now, Speed Cafe have done a great article that I'll link in the description. The good news is that they identified the problem quite quickly related to the crankshaft. The bad news is that they can't manufacture a fix quick enough. And in fact, supercars are trying to source GT3 Mustang parts to put on the supercar version of the Mustang ahead of this year's great race as an interim solution. Now, my big concern with such a serious reliability issue is that supercars may have had to drop their focus on the results of the dyno testing, as we've all been expecting a potential parity adjustment to the Ford Mustang engine ahead of this year's great race. But... As of about half an hour ago, Supercars released a statement saying that both the crankshaft fix and potential parity adjustments are both going to be tested on track at Queensland Raceway next week. So this is a fast moving story. It's one to follow. But uh, regardless of if they get both these items over the line, it's certainly a chaotic run up to the great race for the Ford runners. I promise I'm going to finish on a positive note, but my second point here is on the contentious side as well. And that is, of course, the full course yellows, which we've seen in action now at the Enduros for the first time. And my impressions are not good. It was um, very, very frustrating to see such long caution periods, especially uh, during a race that actually went time certain in the end. Now, the drivers have concerns about how it's actually activated, including Davy Reynolds, who had that great quote, well, at least we're crashing safely now. Um, that was a good chuckle over the Sandown weekend. But for us as fans, I feel like it causes two major issues. As I said, number one, 
elongating yellow flag periods, which no one ever wants to see. And the second problem, which in my opinion is the bigger problem, is that's just sanitizing the strategic side of the race. Teams no longer have to double stack because they know they will be given enough time to bring both their cars in over multiple laps. Uh, and that reduces or removes those snap decisions that can decide races and championships, which I think is just an important part of the sport that we've suddenly lost. And the other side of that, of course, is the intensity, that battle between the teammates trying to be first on the road so that they have pit priority if a safety car is called. Now, you could argue that this is a fairer result, absolutely, and it's certainly better than closing the pit lane altogether, which I have seen some fans suggest in the past. But for me, I like the unpredictability. For me, this is removing one of the upsides of a safety car is that it does throw the balls in the air and you've got to wait to see where they land strategically, who wins, who loses, who got lucky and unlucky. And that is the sad fact of motorsport. Sometimes you just get unlucky and drivers can get screwed over by double stacking. It's a simple fact of the sport. But for me, I would much rather have that intensity and unpredictability over the current and very sanitized feel that the strategy has under these full course yellow rules. Don't get me wrong, the safety aspect of the full course yellow is great. I think it's been a problem for a long time in the sport that we've had drivers going full pelt past accident zones. That is a disaster waiting to happen and I'm glad it's being addressed, but I feel like this rule has just gone too far. It's giving too much team security when it comes to things like uh, pitting both of their cars. For me, if they can find some sort of middle ground where you keep that safety element this is introducing, but you don't sanitize the strategy, that would be the sweet spot. And hopefully we do see some sort of change like that leading into Bathurst. All right, let's wrap up on that positive note that I've been promising you, and that's main drivers being forced to start the Enduros. Yes, I say positive because for me, and this may be controversial, I actually really like this rule at the Sandown 500. Now, the logic behind this mostly, apparently, is to uh, get the main drivers in the cars at the start of the great race when you've got the uh, most number of casual fans tuning in. They're the people the sport want potential fans to connect with and follow in theory for the rest of the championship. I don't know if that theory checks out. I'm sure they're going to crunch the numbers after this year's uh, Bathurst 1000. But for me, I actually like the impact it has on the racing because, and this is the greatest compliment, the co-drivers these days are just too darn professional. At the start of the Enduros for many years now, it feels like a holding pattern. Beyond the first turn, everyone is just so cautious. Very few people are willing to have a go and push hard and get stuck into it. And as a result, I feel like the Enduros, certainly over recent years, have just got a little bit tame at the start. This year's Sandown 500, though, with the main drivers in the cars, it was far more aggressive. You've got all those existing rivalries from the season bubbling away. You've got their uh, sometimes overconfidence behind the wheel and some big moves and storylines emerging early in the race. So I actually really like this rule change at the Sandown 500 at least. Now, my opinion on this might change after the Bathurst 1000. I feel like the co-driver strategy is an even bigger element of that race. And over many years, we've seen different strategies in terms of putting main drivers in with the coes at the start or vice versa that often shakes up the race and adds some intrigue to what each of the teams are doing. I do think I will miss that element in this year's Bathurst 1000, but based on how the opening stint of Sandown went, it could also increase uh, the storylines and the drama that we see early on in this year's great race. So for now, at least, I'm keeping an open mind about this rule change. I suspect I'm in the minority on that last point, but I'd love to know your thoughts on the primary driver rule or anything else we've discussed in today's video down there in the comment section. I'm getting set for a big few weeks here on the channel as we get ready for the great race. Got a few videos in the pipeline as we build up to the big one. So be sure to subscribe if you want to be one of the first to see those. Remember to treat people like your trackside down there in the comments and I will see you in the next one.